Okay, role models and learning journeys, again, is something that we, we help people understand this is an important concept to try and get across. How they do it is up to them. Some examples of um, this is a, a child who's talked about his learning journey in fishing. A bit like my son Ben, trying to help him understand he's been on a learning journey to, to get to where he's got in his skills rather than it just being something that he was born with. So helping children to reflect back. In particular, children, are, they're up for certificates in assembly, being told how brilliant they are at swimming because, you know, that's, it's another certificate and it's something else to, to celebrate. But what school's now trying to do is help the rest of the students recognise that, that that child is up at six o'clock every morning swimming for two hours before she comes to school and that's why she's standing up there not just because she, she can do it because she's a natural because she's you know because she can just do it but because she's been in a pool since she was six months and has been working that hard so then getting them to track their own journey recognizing that it's practice and opportunity which has helped them to get there and then some of them projecting into the future where they think they're going to be and how they're going to get there um, these are two role models which one school just created the head teacher stood up in assembly and created Bob and Lola. Bob who said, I won't, and Lola who said, I can't. But created the story about how they changed. And Bob now says, I will, and Lola says, I can. And these two characters have just become a fabric of the, the, the school. The children talk about Bob and Lola like they're their best friends. They're real to them, and the message is very real to them. Unfortunately, they're going to have, well, I don't know, unfortunately, it's going to make them be creative. They've got a Lola starting in reception this year. So Bob and Lola have had to go transition to high school with the year sixes at the end of last term, and they're going to be thinking about new characters and, and creating it in a different way. But I remember our, our, one of our um, education officers, uh, in fact, the head of standards and learning effectiveness, went into the school, and he saw something about Bob and Lola, and he said to one of the children, well, well who are Bob and Lola? And this child just reamed off what Bob and Lola was all about. So it's really helping them foster and, and develop their beliefs but that, that, that they can and they will. I um, don't know if, if people have heard about these little characters. Um, Shirley Clark talks about them in, in her training and her book. Um, a, a school in, in the UK came up with an idea of creating characters. This is for quite young children with stories attached to them. And the characters represent the behaviours that will come out of a growth mindset. So it's to try and get from a very young age children actually behaving in a growth mindset, which will help them develop the beliefs that they can continue to improve. So you've got Dima Duck, who doesn't give up, is determined. Iggy the Iguana, I think, has an imagination. Colin the uh, Caterpillar concentrates. But each week they might introduce the character with the little story about Dima who never gives up because she keeps paddling across to get the bread and all her siblings are off feeding already. Um, and then they'll use the characters in their learning. So they'll take Cuba and put Cuba on the desk. I'm concentrating like Cuba. They actually understand what the word concentrate means for a start. They kind of make assumptions that children know what this, this means and what it looks like, but making it very visible. Some schools, they take the characters home and have a go. Hamid sits on the dining room table whilst they're having a go eating their broccoli. Okay? It's just amazing, the power of just using characters. We have some year sixes making videos of the characters to share with the, the youngsters as well. This is a preschool that have used, um, just made storyboards the with the characters so they can actually um, act out the stories themselves. This was um, in the homeschool book for that, that particular preschool. So again, communicating to parents these behaviours. Another school made up their own. Okay, so they, they came up with Ursula, understand others, would he work hard, Isabella improve, and the, and the descriptors of what that would look like. Okay, they're for slightly older children. And then how to celebrate the growth mindset is by actually recognising and praising for these behaviours. So this is a school that has a fuzzy bug Friday assembly rather than a, a good work assembly, which it used to be, with the same children going up every week because it's the same ones who always produce the perfect work. Actually, every child knows now if they're concentrating or showing they're curious or having a go, which any of them can do, they're likely to have that acknowledged in the assembly. They get one of those little fuzzy bugs with the little things that says, I think, congratulations on it. And they love it. And every week, the school changes that display, depending on what's been presented in the assembly. And again, linking their certificates to the learning powers. OK, so termination. Role models, again, it's about translating into the context. This is a boys' school. They were finding the words growth mindset weren't going down as well as they'd hoped, but they were getting it but they decided to use the word grit 
and some of Angela Duckworth's uh, <coughs> research on grit, which the boys thought, yeah, gritty, we can, we can do this. And, 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 and they've kind of, they still use the words growth mindset as well, certainly communicating to parents, um, but they've looked at ways that it will resonate with them, and they've used um, Star Wars as characters to make it come alive, and examples of Yoda being very growth minded, I think. He's the expert. <laughs> Other role models, this we, Jeremy mentioned the Dandelion Project and the group of um, people who have set up um, this idea that Guernsey is going to be the best place to live by 2020. Um, these two people who heard us talk at the TEDx event, which they um, organised, and thought, what can we do that's going to push ourselves? Not particularly sporty, not runners, especially 18 months ago, they decided, oh, we're going to run seven marathons in seven days. And lo and behold, last summer, they ran seven marathons in seven days on Guernsey. They looked exhausted. They did it. And this year, and I think beginning of October, the date's on there, they're going to next be... Next week. Next week. They're going to be running for 48 hours non-stop on treadmills. Okay. Great local examples, local role models of just ordinary people. You know, we're not exceptional. We have Lee Merrion, who's an Olympian, Olympian marathon runner. People see him maybe as something special, something exceptional. Well, he is because he's worked hard and he does talk about how hard he's worked and he'll go into schools and he's a great model. But these guys, you know, in a year and a half, what, they, what they've managed to achieve, it's amazing.